everybody. Um, let me start um, thank you, giving the thank you to the organizers for inviting me and allow me to address you. Um, I wish I were finishing. I'm just starting. <laughs> so all the feedback that you can provide me about my presentation is welcome. It can improve my dissertation in the future, probably two or three years more. Um, I'm working on human rights and its intersection with intellectual property, in particular with copyright in online environments in Latin America. Uh, and initially it was a uh, hand on issues connect connected with substantive copyright law. Uh, progressively, I have, been, I have been moving to enforcement online and criminal enforcement. This presentation and the paper that has been distributed to you uh, uh, is based on the uh, eighth uh, chapter of my dissertation. And here I basically address human rights concerns connected with copyright enforcement through criminal law, uh, but only the substantive issues of criminal law. I'm not talking about procedural issues, uh, how the procedures have to be, the, the, the particularly the due process. I'm not talking about particularly punishment or sentencing. Uh, that is part of uh, another chapter. I'm just focusing on substantive criminal law here. Uh, let me start uh, answering this question, because this is a question that you can see over and over in some literature about copyright in Latin America. Is there any copyright in Latin America? Well, to be honest, uh, the copyright tradition in Latin America is as long as the Euro uh, European or the uh, American tradition copyright law. Uh, as soon as those countries became independent, they adopt copyright regulation even when they didn't have any capacities for printing in those days. Uh, and today, actually, Latin American countries are in full compliance with the Berna Convention, with the TRIPS Agreement, and most of them, most of them probably one or two not yet, with uh, the Internet Web Treaty, with the Twipo Internet Treaties on Copyright, and also in the ones on labor and rights. So the problem is not about implementing regulation. We have regulation in Latin America. So there is when we have a problem. So uh, I'm not sure if everybody can read it, but you know, have you heard about, all about uh, the Pirates of the Korean? Yes, booming illegal CDPs in Latin America. <laughs> The second challenge that some scholars put about Latin America is that in Latin America, uh, which is based on the pervasive idea of the Latin America is the land of no rule of law, we don't have enforcement. But to be honest, we have enforcement, and our enforcement in Latin America is not that different from the enforcement that you can find in other countries. Let me show you some uh, numbers of uh, criminal enforcement in Latin America of copyright. Here you have the prosecution and conviction of copyright crime by country. And here you see uh, the number of prosecution uh, in the U.S., 45 cases per year between 2002 and 2011. In Mexico, we have three times more numbers of prosecutions, and mostly the same number of conviction, but we have a country with uh, one-third of the population of the U.S. And it's the same in Chile. In Chile, we have uh, practically four times more prosecution than in the U.S., and practically three times more convictions than in the U.S., with a population that is ten times smaller than the U.S. population. Those numbers of Chile are based on static uh, I'm sorry, I did this with the software, and it doesn't look that nice. But this data is from 2001 to 2008, because after that, Chile had implemented uh, the uh, criminal reform, and today those are the numbers. We have almost 2,000 people prosecute per year in Chile between 2009 and 2011. Unfortunately, because the statistic has changed, we don't have the number of convictions, but most high, most probably they are over 15,000 people, sorry, 1,500 people a year convicted for copyright violation in Chile. It's hard to see what is the actual impact of those numbers, well, because the countries differ significantly one from another, but what is usual in criminal in, in criminology is to compare according to the radio of population. And here you have the numbers of the numbers of copyright prosecutions per country for every 10 million people. For every 10 million Americans, you have one and a half prosecuted. Three, 13 in Mexico. The number is mostly the same as in Argentina, 13. And in Chile, we have over 1,100 people 
for 10 million Chileans. So we are a pirate country by far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have persecution. We have numbers of persecution. So what is the problem then? Maybe it's the punishment. The punishment is not strong enough. But not the case. Here you have the persecution for copyright infringement. Which two football pirates? Here you see the prosecution in Argentina, the punishment goes from one month to six years. In the case of Peru, the same crime goes from four to eight years. Those numbers are higher than most developed countries. The average punishment in the US is 18 months. So, by far, less than Peru, less than Colombia. The average punishment. And those numbers are also higher than the number in Europe or the OECD countries, if you compare them. The average punishment in civil law European countries is two to three years. This, the average is higher than two to three years. And it's not just that. It's not that we have a lot of persecution, a lot of conviction, and higher punishment compared with developed countries, compared with the U.S. It's also that we have really strong punishment. Just let me give you some examples. Punishment in terms of imprisonment of copyright infringement in Argentina is by far higher than producing child pornography. Uh, rape in Peru deserve exactly the same punishment than copyright infringement. In Peru, the average, the, the, in Peru, the punishment for homicide starts in six years. So a severe or a, a severe case or a serious case of copyright infringement can deserve a punishment that's even higher than homicide. Those are actual numbers. And we know that already that we have numbers of persecution, convictions, and we have punishment. So it's not that we are the land of no rule of law. Um, so when I saw these numbers, I started to think, well, is there some appealing case? And I found this case, the country Ramirez. Who was Ramirez? Ramirez was a 23 years old guy from Colombia who was concrete doing his service in the, in the police. Oh, you close this. Just the, I'm not going to be here for four hours. But. <laughs> okay, what's happened with Ramirez? Ramirez, complete Ramirez, bought 16 cities in the street of Colombia. Unfortunately for him, he was caught by the police. And he, and two years later, he was condemned, convicted to 48 months for copyright infringement. For, he wasn't selling. He didn't get this copyrighted uh, pirate material for selling or distributing, just for his personal usage. Uh, the newspaper is happy because most of the conviction, he's using an electronic bracelet, so the court can know where he is right now. Uh, fortunately, he already finished with his conviction. And you can find a lot of cases like those in Latin America. My paper has at least 10 cases where you can be kind of in shock for the professor, the university professor who copy a, a few paragraphs of his student's dissertation and go two years of imprisonment. Or the 60 years old woman who was selling two copies of two books in the street of Colombia and was being prosecuted for four years of imprisonment. So we have some human faces, well, probably not that faces, but we have cases of copyright infringement that is being prosecuted in Latin America, and which this has produced a lot of overcriminalization and over punishment, and sacrificing or diminishing human rights, as we will see. I'm not focusing on over punishing. This is a, a second, second chapter, well, the, one of the chapters of my dissertation. I'm going to focus only on criminalization meaning how we define what is a crime. 
know how we define what will be the punishment, how we define what is a crime, and confronting those principles with human rights obligations. And I'm taking care of only three principles, three classical principles of criminal law that can be recepted by human rights instruments. Those principles are the principle of legality. Probably everybody remember the nullum crimen, nullum pena, sine legge, previa scripta, de scripta. We need to know what is the crime. Citizens need to know what is the crime so they can behave. The principle of men's right or culpability in civil law countries. If you made a mistake, you cannot be punished because of a mistake. You are punished because you behave on purpose. And the principle of harmfulness. We don't punish just for moral purposes. We punish because we see damage. And we want to restore the damage through criminal law. Let me stop with the principle of legality and show you an example from the Argentinian copyright act that punishes any person who, by whatever means and in whatever form, defraud the intellectual property rights. That is that is that problem. That is that crime. Whatever you do with copyright, you are a criminal. And you deserve up to six years. So I am not sure if this drafting comply with the idea of the principle of legality that people can know for real when they are committing a crime. There is a difference. This, this, this is the drafting of Argentina, but it's also the drafting of Brazil. Uh, there are better drafting like this one. Colombia. Punishing for two to four, five years, by whatever means of procedure, without authorization, pr reproduce a word, transport, restore, keep. This, this was the case of Ramirez. He was keeping the children. Distribute, import, sell, of course, apply for selling or distribution of product. This is just the number one of the article related to copyright infringement. There are seven numbers and 22 different conducts that can become a crime related to copyright. So it has a better drafting, but it's defeating the whole purpose of the principle of legality, which is provide citizens, people, of a clear idea of what is a crime and what is not a crime. So we have a serious problem with that. In, in the paper, I examine differ, different crimes related with copyright and how they affect the principle of legality. A second principle is the principle of mens rea, or principle of culpability, that you can connect with the principle of presumption of innocence, or the right to presumption of innocence in international human rights. And here I want to bring the trades agreement. If you see the trades agreement, there is a requirement of willful, willfulness. Not everything is a crime for trips agreement. The trips agreement requires that it needs to be a willful copyright party on a commercial scale. There is a requirement of some psychological connection between the funder and his conduct. Well, so there is that connection with the presumption of innocence. But in Latin America, that requirement does not exist. Probably the only exception is Mexico. In the rest of the countries, there is no explicit requirement of willfulness. What does it mean? It, it, mean, it varies from country to country. It means that it doesn't mean that the psychological connection of the offender with the crime is irrelevant. It doesn't mean that. It means that it's irrelevant and therefore the prosecutors only need to prove the fact but not pay attention to the psychological connection. It means that if you prove the fact, the very fact are enough to prove the willfulness. But in any case, what it produces is that you reverse the burden of proof. Because if the willfulness is, is important, it will be the defendant, the one who needs to prove his existence, its existence. And that is relevant, and that it, it is relevant for purpose of uh, the sentencing. So criminalizing uh, in Latin America, willfulness is not a requirement. It's only got the right piracy in a commercial scale, with the exception of Mexico. And now let me jump to the last principle. This is, I'm making it quickly, 
but you have like 40 pages to enjoy if you, if you want. <laughs> the principle of artfulness. Well, as I told you, the principle of artfulness, the purpose of the artfulness is basically to require some damage in the conduct that is being, is being punished. We don't adopt criminal law only to enforce our moral beliefs. We enforce criminal law because we see, we see in some behavior damaging consequences. And that is the purpose also in the trade agreement, for the right piracy on a commercial scale. The expression on a commercial scale is calling for some level of damage, or at least some level of risk. Well, that language does not exist in Latin America. It exists in two countries, in Mexico and Costa Rica. In the other countries, the level of damage, or even the commercial purpose is not relevant for purpose of criminalizing the conduct. It may, it may be relevant for purpose of determining the punishment. But in principle, if you commit a copyright infringement with no commercial purpose, you are an infractor and you are a criminal in most countries. So, let me stop, I need to find my notes. I, I get lost. <laughs> so, whatever, whatever the damage, disregarding the, the, the level of damage, we are punishing in Latin America. In the practice, I haven't seen, to be honest, I haven't seen any case in which a library is being prosecuted because uh, they, you, they are using a word with no authorization of the right holder in circumstances outside of the uh, at those allowed by law. I haven't seen that. But what I have seen in Mexico, in Colombia, in Argentina, and also in Chile, is that copyright holders are treating libraries and schools, universities, for using copyrighted material without authorization because of criminal law. So it's not only the fact that we have a lot of prosecution, conviction, and hard punishment. It's also that criminal law is being used to a child innovation, but also inter public interest um, uh, to set po uh, limitations of public interest uh, uh, tasks. So we have criminal, and what we have in Latin America is that unlike, unlike the trade agreement, we are not punishing willfulness, willful copyright piracy in the commercial scale, but only copyright piracy. I haven't mentioned that. But copyright in Latin American countries, as civil law uh, countries, uh, is broader than in the U.S. We have moral rights. And it is not unusual, actually, that is the rule, to find crimes associated to the infraction of moral rights. So if you publish a book, or you present a work in a whatever place under your name, and this is not yours, you can risk two, three, four years, it depends. It depends on the country. And not only that, in several countries, particularly and in community countries, meaning Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, but also in some Central American countries, there is this understanding that copyright protection to authors must be comprehensive. Meaning that not only those rights that are granted explicitly by law are copyright holders' rights. Any potential usage, any potential exploitation, even of circumstances that are not in the minds of the regulator, are exclusive right, the right holder. And therefore the protection is broader than in, in Europe or in, the U, or in the US. So we have practically that in Latin America, what this is a crime is copyright infringement. Any usage with no authorization is a crime. Let's assign Mexico, let's aside Costa Rica. Even common behavior. So, this, a child downloading music, may be a crime in Latin America. It's not a serious deal because the concern of the USDR today is the, copyright, the piracy in the street. There's selling CDs, selling software in the streets, selling books in the street, but it will 
He will. So we have that in Latin America, we are punishing and using criminal law against common behavior. With full disregarding to human right limitations set on criminal law. Uh, there are some pushback. In my paper, I refer to some judicial decisions, some legislative initiatives. In Latin America, they are trying to introduce some rational, rationality in the criminal enforcement. The problem is that they have limited impact. Most of the cases are in ordinary courts. And because we are civil law countries, we don't have precedent. So one decision, even by the Supreme Court, is not binding for other courts. And we need to go all over again, which is case in making the arguments that a given case, a given punishment, is an infraction of human rights. So just, just to finish, two issues that I think we should, or we may, work in the future, particularly having in mind the case of Latin America, in order to work on human rights enforcement in connection with copyright uh, enforcement. It's the first is using the constitutional mechanism for enforcing human rights. Uh, here I'm not talking about ordinary courts, I'm talking about constitutional courts. Just like two or three weeks ago, the Constitutional Court of Colombia declared constitutional the implementing law of the free trade agreement on intellectual property. Well, you can find and you can build cases to challenge the constitutionality on the law with general ethics. With general ethics, not in a case by case. And which is important about Latin American constitutional law from a perspective of human right is that first, constitu constitutions in Latin America not only list the rights that they granted, most of them have incorporated human rights instruments. So you can use international law to enforce those provisions in those countries. Second, those constitutions provide constitutional remedies. So you don't need to find a cause of action and a special action. No, no, no. The pure constitution, the mere constitution is enough for going to the court. And third, you can enforce constitutional provisions and therefore, indirectly, human rights, not only against state actors, but also against non-state actors, which is a difference. All, the whole discussion about corporate human rights responsibility and human rights is alien. It makes no sense in Latin America because those corporations, whatever corporations mean, are required to comply with human rights obligations by constitution. The only exception is Mexico and Guatemala. And a second way to explore this enforcement of human rights in relation, in relation with copyright enforcement it's exploring the regional human rights system, and particularly the, I mean, the Inter-American Human Rights Court. Uh, but for that purpose, we need to increase the engagement of scholars and the community and policymakers on human rights and intellectual property. During the morning, you were mentioning that this is a new deal, a new issue in, in the US with 12 years of experience. This is not even an issue in most Latin American countries. In part because most of human rights scholars have been focusing on gross human rights violation, and this is an issue that for the next generation. And in part because we, the scholars of copyright and intellectual property, have failed and haven't paid enough attention to the issue. 